Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back in the good old Iowa. Not just any Iowa, the original Iowa. And not just any original Iowa, but my original Iowa. And of course, as you guys saw at the beginning of the video, we're running the free to play William Sims, Andrew Cunningham, Paolo de Revel, just straight free to play as far as the eye can see. Now, before we get started, I just want to talk about a couple of things. The title, for one, The Curse of Knowledge. Battle starts. Well, it can mean many things, but it's probably not what you think. The Curse of Knowledge is, in this context, is simple. The more that you learn about a particular subject, in this case, World of Warships Legends, the more you forget what it was like before you had that knowledge. Okay? That's, that's what we're talking about. And I'm guilty as this as much as anybody. You guys hear me all the time, especially live when I get into games. I'm like, how do these people not understand basic things, right? All the time. And there's probably a lot more colorful language that either precurses or follow, <laughs> follows that up. But uh, this is going to be a textbook beatdown. All right? And it may not go in my favor. <laughs> but this is going to be a textbook beatdown. So, with all of the hype built up for you guys, let's get this party started. Shall we? Also, I think I may end up doing ranked battles today. Um, today being Saturday for you guys. Um, we'll, we'll see. I, if I do, I'll be streaming. Keep an eye out. Now, right off the bat, we have a Kansas here. And then, of course, Michelangelo gets spotted. And you can see Michelangelo's on his way, right? Like, he's he's coming in. But he also hit his smoke screen, so he's not going to be spotted for a, a couple of minutes. So we've got time to go ahead and take this shot. And as we finally get a shot, this is why I didn't use the auto-aim. Because the auto-aim sometimes is so far off. Especially the further you get away from somebody, the further off those shots are. And that was pretty accurate. That's this Kansas. Bonk. <laughs> Ooh, it's not every day you get to start out with 34,000 damage at 19 kilometers. But by God, we'll take it. Now, the next shot, I ain't gonna lie. I saw the Shimanto and I was like, oh, please, please, please do it. And I was waiting to see if he was going to turn. He doesn't end up turning. And then right as I fire, Michelangelo gets spotted because that's how this works. And then there's a second Michelangelo coming. Can you tell it's the last week of the update yet? <laughs> Is it just flooded with dum-dums and Michelangelos? Let, let me know down in the comments below. <laughs> It's just every every time you get to the last week of the update, you get everybody get unlocking the campaign ships. You just end up with like entire lobbies full of the campaign ship. So uh, yeah, you can definitely tell. But this shot should equal death, right? It gets a Michelangelo. How is that not a Citadel? And then I fire the rear guns at him, and I'm like, okay, well that'll do some damage. Nope, one shell, <laughs> one shell. Still no Citadel. Dude is full broadside. And then we see the Vladivostok here, and I ain't gonna lie, I was really hoping to shoot this Vladivostok's broadside, but, as would have it, they have one destroyer on this flank, and uh, that is a problem. So we're gonna go ahead and take a shot of him. And uh, we take, you know, a good chunk off of him. We only hit him with two shells, but we have a Shimanto and a Michelangelo behind us. We turn in, we dodge most of the shells, and then you, what you're gonna see is this guy actually torps the cruisers. And then me being the nice guy that I am, I just happened to turn in front of the torpedoes, expecting him to torp the big fat battleship. And boy, do those torps hurt. We're taking on water quickly. God, I hate anything Asian when it comes to torpedoes. They're awful. But here we take a shot into the superstructure. Fantastic shot. Only one of the shells dropped short into the belt. Everything else went high enough to go ahead and give us some pins. But here we are going to do our best to hold for as long as possible, right? We know the destroyer's out there, so we're going to use the island to shield us from potential torpedo strikes. And you can see we're not currently spotted, so the destroyer kind of leafed off, right? He just got out of here. Now, our Michelangelo behind us did end up killing, I believe, their Michelangelo. But you can see I'm kind of looking for a potential here. And you can see I was looking for, I was measuring up the Kansas again. He's too close. Can't quite lob the island, unfortunately. So uh, I'm going to start trying to get my guns to the left. Because I had a feeling that, yes, as you expect, our broadside Michelangelo is dead to their charging Michelangelo. Shocker. But 
This Shimanto is going to go out to where he can be easily countered by the enemy Michelangelo, leaving me all alone. But, <laughs> before that happens, he does act as pretty good bait for me, and this guy was not expecting this. But he should be dead! <laughs> Sorry! How do I only get three citadels there when I hit him with five shells dead center of mass? Please, Wargaming, stop making me leave everybody with just enough to be a problem, okay? Seriously, it's annoying. But, I digress. He now charges in. He's going to go bow into us. Honestly, he's not that big of a threat while he's bow in, but we're expecting torpedoes from him, so we need to change course. We go ahead. We do overmatch a little bit, so we want to try to get some shells through the bow. And now, I'm low health. I'm being chased by an SAP secondary cruiser that is low health. I get a fire with the secondaries as well, because I have secondaries too. And mine actually have damage over time, potentially. But rather than sit here and wait to deal with a freaking cruiser that's going to probably kill me with secondaries and or torpedoes, I go ahead and I go forward. We've got this Kansas begging Ford out here. He, he thinks he's going to be super special. He's feeling some type of way about the fact that I slapped him out of him earlier. Uh, but we're, we're trying to get away from these SAP secondaries. They are nasty, man. They just are. The, the Michelangelo secondaries are disgusting. Make no mistake about it. Like, they are disgusting. So, uh, I don't have much of a choice here. Uh, but notice as, as I push in, I'm going to start to rotate the guns to the right side. I'm going to have the front guns pointing just off to the right side of the bow so that I can shoot the Kansas, get some damage. Look at that accuracy, though. Good God. And then the rear guns are going to be in place to be able to shoot the enemy Michelangelo as he comes around the island chasing me. Because how many times have I said it before? Don't chase me around an island. It never works in your favor. But surely we won't leave him with just enough to get away again. Right, game? Right. <laughs> God dang, this game gets on my nerves for that crap. How is he alive? Please explain it. Those shells were touching. I get one Citadel? Really? Really? And of course, I don't get to kill. Leave him with just enough to live again. It's twice. Twice in the same ship. Leave him with just enough to get away. He played like an absolute numpty. He deserved to go. But that's the people that the game protects the most. And we all know that. <laughs> but, uh... Our lightning, our team is going to do everything they have to to uh, to bring home the bacon here. Uh, we did everything we needed to do. Like if we'd have had one other person on that flank that wasn't a complete goober, we probably just steamroll, right? And it, this was mostly a steamroll. Uh, but our Michelangelo is coming across the map, and he's going to have open season here as our uh, destroyer asks for help, gets a little bit of help, and then kindly smokes up to give the the enemy cruiser a chance to disappear instead of just keeping him spotted for the, the Michelangelo to finish off. Like, I, I'll never understand how people will ask for help and then immediately let people go unspotted. Like, if you want help, spot him. It's that simple. He will eventually get him spotted again, but it's just one of those things that drives me crazy as somebody like, I, I do try to help people when they ask for it. And you can see that the Michelangelo is, to his credit, keeping the guns on the left side of the boat. Why? Because that's where the cruiser is that the destroyer was asking for help on. And he knows that he's a one-shot kill. Now he's letting the secondaries do the talking on the right side. And he is going to get the shot off at the cruiser. Which, that's going to be a GG no re. Goodbye, sunshine. But, he's also got torpedoes on the right side of his boat, right? So he's going to go ahead and drop torpedoes into the smoke screen-ish of the other side. You can hear the torps leave just as he comes around the corner. He dodges the torpedoes from the enemy Michelangelo. The secondaries of the uh, friendly Michelangelo are going to do a pretty good job of disposing of the enemy Michelangelo. This is the thing. like These things are very good at getting rid of each other. But uh, down goes the enemy Michelangelo. The Kansas is sailing right into potential torpedoes that should be spotted considering the Vladivostok just took one. But uh, as he drives by here, unfortunately, he doesn't have the shot ready to go on the enemy uh, Vladivostok. So not the best drive by you've ever seen in your life. Uh, he also didn't have torpedoes on that side. But watch what he does here. Knowing that the torpedoes are at the back, he can easily turn the ship and get the rear torpedoes or the other side torpedoes off to hit the uh, enemy Vladivostok. While his secondaries end up taking out the Kansas and then the, the secondaries and the torpedoes help get rid of the enemy Vladdy. So, good play, 
with a double strike to end the game. And that guy ends up with more medals than a North Korean general. But at the end of the day, who number one? <laughs> Coming in, top of the leaderboard with a free-to-play build in an absolute brawler of a match. So just goes to show, guys. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Take advantage of it. And then we all got to work a little bit more on the curse of knowledge, right? Like, don't, don't forget that as you get better at the game, there are still people learning. And I am guilty of this, like, 100%. You guys know that. So we just got to try to take, take and ease our own stress a little bit and remember just a little bit what it was like when we started. So let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.